In this problem, we need to prove that E must always be real. So we're going to do that by rewriting E as a combination of a real number E0 plus an imaginary component. And if it is indeed true that this E term is a real number, then this imaginary component should be equal to zero. So our goal of this problem is to prove that this capital gamma over here should be equal to zero. And then we can do that by first considering the wave function. So we know that the wave function is a combination of xi of x, uh, the x component, times phi of t, the t component. And then we also know that phi of t can be written in such a way. And so we're going to substitute the alternative expression for e inside here. So e is given by some real number e0 plus some imaginary component. And we can put the i inside the bracket for the exponent. So we have e to the power of negative i e0 t divided by h bar. And then for the second expression, I have e to the power of gamma t divided by h bar. So the negative sign goes away because I have negative i times i, and negative i times i is just equal to positive 1. So there's no negative sign over here. So uh, this is one way of express expressing our wave function. So the next thing we're going to consider is this integral. So we're going to consider the integral of the absolute value square of the wave function, which we know should be equal to 1. So we're going to try to evaluate this integral by substituting this expression inside the integral. So we're going to have to take the absolute value square of the wave function. So let's try to, try to find the absolute value square of the wave function. So this is just equal to the conjugate of the wave function times the wave function. And the conjugate of the wave function is just a conjugate of these three individual components. You can see the wave function now is composed of xi of x, this is e term, and this is other e term. So we just take the conjugate of these three terms. So we have conjugate of xi of x. The conjugate of this term is just taking away the negative sign in the exponent. You can prove that the conjugate of this is just taking away the negative sign by considering Euler's formula. I won't go into that in this video, so you can you can look that up if you're unsure about taking the conjugate of this term. So this is the conjugate, and then now we need to multiply it back with the wave function. So we just multiply it by this term. So let's just copy everything up that we have so far. So you can see that uh, both of these terms they cancel out to give you one because this is just the this is just the inverse of this. So both of them just multiply together to give you one. Uh, these two multiply together to give you uh, the absolute value of xi of x squared, and then these two multiply together to give you e to the power of two gamma t divided by h bar. So this is going to be the absolute value square of the wave function. So we can substitute this inside the integral now. So we know that this is equal to 2 gamma t divided by h bar times the absolute value of xi of x dx. So I should be a bit more consistent with my notation. And then obviously I can just pull this outside of the integral. There are no x terms, so I can just pull it outside. So you see that we know that this entire expression should be equal to 1. And then you see that this entire expression is composed of two components. You have this t component, this term here is dependent on time, and you have this other term that is independent of time. So as, as time goes on, this value is going to change. So that means we are unable to guarantee that this, uh, that this expression can always be evaluated to a 1. So the only way out of this uh, problem is that 2 gamma t divided by h bar must be equal to 0, because uh, if this is the case, then you have e to the power of 0, which is just equal to 1. So this would be, this would then be independent of time. So we would, we would now be able to guarantee that this expression would always be we evaluated to 1. So in order for this to be true, then this condition must be met. And this will then imply that gamma must be equal to 0. And so there we have it. This was exactly what we were trying to prove. So now we know that gamma is equal to 0. So we know that the constant e here has no imaginary component. It is composed of an entirely real component.